At the European Parliament, the question of emissions, of CO2 emissions, has come up once again, one could say. During the year, there has been debate. The Parliament rejected the first proposal of the Commission, but now everything seems to be in order, or does it? I'm not sure. Uh, we are debating today about the backloading, so-called backloading. Backloading means that we change the timetable for the auctioning of uh, certificates, of allowances for the emission trading system. And that's very understandable. It's really very understandable. People. The emission trading system is our really core instrument uh, in the fight against climate, climate change in the European Union. But the problem of the system is there are too many certificates in the market. Too many certificates in the market and we started now in procedure to reduce the certificates. What is a certification? What is it all about? certification is if you want to park CO2 in the atmosphere, if you have a power plant or something else, then you have to buy a certificate and then you are allowed to park, to emit one ton of CO2 into the atmosphere. And we expected a price around about 30, 30 euro. And, and it came out to be... And it came out, the reason was the surplus in the system, 4 euro, 3 euro 50. A cup of coffee at the airport or at the train station is at the same level. But yes. the basic idea of having those amounts was to um, improve innovation in yes. green um, in green, new technology, innovation. renewable energies, exactly. uh, to, to uh, maintain production lines uh, and, and to invest in green technologies. And, uh, and it was not so effective because in 2008, here the parliament uh, made a mistake because the parliament was afraid, oh, the industry, uh, is it enough? Are there enough certificates? And we gave too many certificates in the market, not I'm, I voted against it, uh, but the majority here in the, in the parliament voted for more certificates. And now we have the problem with the system that the price is down and we have to think about how we can increase the price. But one of the arguments by, we could, Mm -hmm. Speaking loud, uh, the conservative side of the parliament was that if you were not handling this well, you could risk outsourcing of companies who wanted to have more yes. access to emo uh, emissions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was the argument from, from the right side here in the parliament. Uh, but we have a carbon leakage list. Uh, they still exist, this list, which companies are not included in the emission trading system, they get her allowances for free because all, all uh, companies who are running risk uh, to have this, this, uh, kind of, this kind of uh, carbon, leakage, uh, carbon leakage problem, the, these problems are solved. And Joster Deke, the general director of DG, general direction of uh, cl climate, the European Commission announced yesterday that there is no carbon leakage problem in the European Union. Official, the Commission announced it. So, uh, it's an argument, but not a really strong argument so, against. Being the rapporteur, being the chairman of the uh, Committee for Environmental Issues, what is your reaction to what happened yesterday? Of course, you must in a way be satisfied, you got what you what you could get, mm. one could say. But what is your real reaction to this? Are you satisfied? I'm a little bit sad, I must say, because it took too long, one year too long, I must say. And uh, sometimes the European climate policy is like a snake, really. We have to accelerate our, our, uh, uh, our process in the next period. We, our task is to maintain the emission trading system. We need new goals for 2030. Uh, the council will will decide in the in the spring about these new new uh, figures, and we will decide in the committee. We have a joint committee meeting, industry committee, and the environment committee. 
it, it uh, will take place at the 9th of January. We have the decision in the committee and then in the plenary, I guess we have it in March. So, But on one hand, the industry wants to be sure that they can maintain their ways of industry. Um, on the other hand, the green industry, so-called, can't probably, but it's a question to you, mm -hmm. um, give the same kind of, the same amount of jobs that the other side um, risks to lose. Isn't that correct? Is there a problem there? We, we are sometimes dividing the industry. In the good green industry and the brown industry. I think it's not necessary. We have one industry and the whole industry uh, has to transfer to an energy efficient industry and a low carbon industry. Uh, for every windmill, if you want to install a windmill, you need a steel tower or a beton uh, tower. So you need the old traditional industry in, in the member states of the European Union. Otherwise, the transition is not possible. We can buy steel uh, from outside the European Union, but I don't want to buy it outside. If we really want the German Energiewende, it's called in Germany Energiewende, if we want really a transition to a low carbon society, we need also the traditional industry and they can do it. They can offer uh, uh, the part. Uh. Final question must be, what's the next step? Next step, 2030 goals, three, CO2, renewables and uh, energy efficiency. And then the next step for the emission trading system is maintaining, uh, to maintain the emission trading system. Uh, I prefer personally, it's my personal opinion, I prefer a system which is more dynamic, not in such a static, static way. Because the existing emission trading system is built on a 2% growth t target. So and if we are below or above, then we have a problem. So we need a corridor or something else. I like really uh, the, the UK approach, I must say, with a bottom, bottom price of 18, 20 euros and also a security value uh, at the top and also to, to take the industry uh, on our side that we have a corridor where the CO2 price is in.